Starting again, welcome to AVF Award Guidance Webinar number four. I'm Henry Gordon-Smith, co-founder of the AVF, and we have Edward Silva, the amazing executive director of the Thought for Food Challenge here. We're going to start off by talking about the AVF Award schedule so that you know what you need to submit and when. So let's get our screen share on. And here we go. Uh, everyone should be able to see the screen. And Edward, you can uh, explain it, OK? Yeah. Thanks, Henry. So for those of you who've been in the, in the challenge uh, since the very start and since we closed the application deadline on at the end of March, know that we're coming up to the deadline here in a couple weeks. And so uh, we wanted to share an updated schedule to kind of give everyone the opportunity to ask questions, to make sure to it about when things will be due. Um, so today we have the guidance webinar on May 6th. On Tuesday, uh, everyone who signed up will receive a final template of what we are expecting from your final submission, which is due on the 23rd of May. This template will have all the information, and we'll go over it today as well, but it'll have all the information necessary to submit your final uh, submission, in addition to supportive materials uh, to try to answer any other questions you may have around the challenge, final submission, the judging, and so forth. Um, so look for that email on Tuesday, uh, which should contain all the information needed for the rest of lunch. On May 13th, we'll have uh, the final milestone, milestone number five. Uh, and this submission will be essentially a design brief to give everyone a sneak peek on what it is you'll be submitting for your final submission. Uh, and we'll have more details on that in your email on Tuesday, and you can also find more information on it on UNoodle. As I mentioned, on Monday, May 23rd at 11.59 PST, so Pacific Standard Time here in California, that will be the deadline for submitting your final submission um, in a PDF format via the UNoodle platform where you upload uh, your document. Once we close that deadline, what we essentially do internally is we turn to the judges and we pass those documents forward. So the judges will have from the 23rd essentially to the 30th uh, to determine the top three winning teams. In that time, it's not uh, just something where you sit Passively, there'll also be a little bit of work for you guys to do as well. And that's what we're calling this public voting round. Uh, the public voting round goes from the 24th of May to the 27th. And what this essentially is, is we're going to ask that teams put up a one minute video on Facebook, uh, on the AVF Facebook page, showcasing their concept, giving a quick overview and really educating the public around what is vertical farming, why it matters, and what did you learn in this process. The email you're going to receive this upcoming Tuesday on May 10th will have all the information necessary for that uh, public voting round and should answer any of the questions you may have. Then on Monday, May 30th, uh, will be a, a very exciting day when we'll announce the winning teams uh, from this year's AVF award. And we'll uh, be communicating with the teams both personally and then make a public announcement on social media and other channels as well. And then, of course, the award ceremony at the AVF Summit in Amsterdam will happen on June 13th uh, in this year, where the uh, winning individual from the winning team will be able to attend the summit, um, the conference essentially, and be able to present in front of a group of people and their peers on what their winning submission was. So that's the final schedule uh, for the next couple of weeks. And um, if everyone has any questions, please feel free to add them here on the webinar or send us an email. Great. Thanks for that, Edward. So. Yeah, definitely mark your calendar with these dates. This is really your final push to get your incredible vertical farming concept out there and in front of the judges. And again, there's going to be uh, three lucky winners, and there's going to be really uh, one main winner that's going to get to that AVF Summit, which is super exciting. So maybe just a little bit about this uh, Milestone 5 on May uh, 13th here. So you know, as Edward said, this is going to be kind of your preview of your concept. Uh, some of you submitted some kind of vision of that a little bit in your site selection one, but this is really your kind of your money shot, if you will. What's what's the 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 kind of concept, the vision that you can share through your design? Um, it could be a rendering, it could be a sketch of it. Um, it's it's the thing that really sells your concept there, and that's that starting point there. Another thing to start preparing for, as Edward said, is this public voting area, which is going to be a one minute video. More details on that are going to be coming on your uh, May 10th uh, email that's coming out. So thanks again for that. The screen share mm -hmm. didn't uh, totally annihilate us that time. So, woof. 
uh, <laughs> this is a good one. Um, now we're going to get into the, the sample of the actual final submission here. So let me get that opened up. And remember, you can ask questions to us throughout this webinar using the Q&A um, tool uh, for the Google Hangouts. And we would really love to get your questions. This uh, webinar will be recorded, and we'll try and watch the comments as well to see if we can answer questions that come afterwards for those of you that can't make it today, because I know it's quite late in Europe, for example. You can also email competition at um, vertical-farming.net uh, with questions you have, and, and we'll do our best to answer those and, and help you feel prepared for the final submission. OK. So now we're going to go through the final submission sample. I'm going to get the screen share on again here. If you have some issues with the, the, the viewing, if I zoom in too much or too little, just let me know in the Q&A. Um, and I'll try and uh, watch out for that, OK? So now, this challenge is really about helping you understand how you should design and plan for your vertical farms. You know, our sponsors, Illumitex, and definitely the, the Association for Vertical Farming are really committed and excited about the fact that we had over 100 entries from 24 different countries. And it's really part of our mission to help uh, inspire you to develop vertical farms and to get involved in the rising urban agriculture industry. So we've done our very best to frame this template as an opportunity for you to showcase how your thought process went and how you've demonstrated uh, kind of the main points and the main judging criteria, uh, particularly around things like economics, design, aesthetic, uh, the locality of the farm, and um, you know how much food it will produce, how many jobs it will create. We'll get into those details. But this is designed to kind of help guide your concept that you've been working on. This is going to be how we're going to expect your, your concept to be submitted to us. Edward will explore some of the rules. Right now, I'm going to go through the components, OK? So you're going to get this in a template format, and you will build your own PDF that you will upload by May 23rd, that final submission date. To start with, you're going to enter in your team name. And you're going to enter in the full names of your team members. So we can always keep track of whose submission this is. We recommend that you find an advisor. And if you were able to find one, we really hope that you will list them here so we can be aware of that. If you're in a single location or multiple locations, make us aware of that here. OK, so that first section should be relatively easy. Then we're going to want you to show off to the judges your main mission. This is going to have a 50-word limit. And here's an example here, to grow local cost basil year-round with zero pesticides. Okay, So tell us what your mission is. Put something that it grabs the attention of the judges and sets the stage for what they're about to look at. It's really important to prepare for your visualizations of your concept. Okay, Now, you don't have to do incredibly fancy renderings. We understand that you're going to have a range of skill sets as far as design is concerned. And some teams will be able to shine in other areas. You're welcome to put design as, as well as you can. Um, but what's really important is that your design talks about your project. It, it showcases what's happening there, what's going on, um, how it's using the space. Uh, you know, If you're talking about different parts of it, maybe there's a marketplace, or maybe there's an education component. You know, let the judges see that through your design as well. And there's various ways we're going to let you showcase that. So first one will be your concept visual one. So this will be pretty much the upgraded version of what you're submitting for your milestone five. I would recommend you put your kind of money shot here. This is an example from an agriculture workshop we did a while back in Fresno. This was a, a, a concept that was done on SketchUp. The team did it within one day. And this is serving as a filler here to help you understand uh, one route you can go. Now, below that, we're going to request the AVF integration typology. Okay? And you might ask, well, you know, what is that? And I'm going to tell you what it is. Okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to go to vertical-farming.net, the AVF website. Okay? And I've added this link to the showcase part of our webinar, uh, our Google Hangout. And you're going to go to resources. Now, there's lots of resources here, including a glossary, um, some images, some infographics. But you're going to go to the Urban Agriculture Integration Typology. 
Now, this is something we developed really early on um, as we began to realize that there's so many different types of vertical farms. How can we help people standardize the language around it? And this is actually what we use on our map, which is on that main landing page of the AVF. So this first one is kind of for the map. It's if they're a member or not. You don't need to pay attention to that for this competition. The next one is also the organization type. I'll explain them, but again, they're not for the competition. So there are different types of vertical farms, right? Some might be growers, some might be a technology for vertical farms, an institution, or a consultancy, OK? Now, the ones below here are what you're going to have to submit, OK? So starting with actually not the organization's size, sorry. Starting with integration, OK? So integration refers to how is the farm integrated into the building. So this first one here, let me see if I can zoom a little bit for you. This first one here, it's holistic, OK? So that means that the building itself was designed to be a farm. So if you have a site that's brand new and there's nothing on it, and you're building your greenhouse, your vertical farm, your incredible concept there, that's going to be holistic, because you're planning all the components of that building to satisfy the needs of that farm. Okay? If it's an existing um, building that you're retrofitting, maybe you're adding something to the facade of it, maybe it's an existing structure that you're building below it, Maybe it's something that you're adapting, OK? That's retrofitting that. So a rooftop greenhouse or a retrofit of the existing structure. If you're using an existing warehouse and an existing building and you're just changing the use of it, but you're not really changing the structure of the outside of it, then it's a conversion. You're not changing that shell very much. You're just working on converting the inside of it, OK? So those icons should be pretty intuitive as you start to understand these more. I'm not going to go through every single one of these, because the information is here at vertical-farming.net. And then you can go to the integration typology. But let's just go briefly through the main categories. So integration was the first one. Then placement, rooftop, interior, facade, underground, on ground. Then exposure. How is the farm exposed to the elements? So this one is obviously exposed to sunlight and water and all of the elements. It is an open air farm. This one is more of a greenhouse farm. And then we get to the artificially lit models, closed and other. Okay. Now let's talk about the growing medium. How are you going to grow the plants? These top three that are kind of in the mustard yellow are hydroponic methods, starting with aeroponic, aquaponic, and hydroponic. We want you to tell us and the judges which method you chose. The methods below are different types of soil-based methods. The final one that we're going to request from you is the production purpose. OK, now there's many different types of vertical farms. And these are some of the purposes that we have standardized that we'd like you to communicate which one your farm hits as its major use. So grow to share would be a community-focused farm. Grow to teach would be a more education-focused one. Another common one would be grow to retail, grow to wholesale. Grow to clean is more like you're cleaning water and air, and that's the main purpose of it. Grow to heal would be for pharmaceuticals. Grow to develop would be for research and development. And grow to prepare would be for cafeterias, restaurants, and home use. So let's go back to the sample. We got one question here, so let me see. Um, this is a great question here from Felipe Hernandez. If it is an adaptable system, can we select more than one option? You're only expected to submit for the main use, OK? So if you have a farm that's also growing for some local market, the majority of it is selling to a supermarket, then your mode would be grow to wholesale. So just share one, because the judges are also new to the typology. So if we have too many in there, it'll confuse them. So just show what. What is your main typology for your operation? What's the main driver for that business model in relationship to what's being grown and the method being used? You can explain that your system is adaptable and has a variety of types um, in your explanation. But the typology is a place to kind of showcase your main approach. Great question, Felipe. Thank you. So going back here, you can now see that for this concept, we've got a converted interior, closed, hydroponic, grow to wholesale farm, and the icons to reflect it. In your May 10th email, we will begin to give you the icons so that you can already start adding them to your PDF. Let's move on to page two. This is a chance to show more concept visuals, OK? 
So basically, you're going to have a space that you can work with. Um, you can put multiple visuals in here. If you are kind of the person that likes to do a kind of poster style, just make sure it's big enough that, you, that, the, that the, the judges can see what's going on in there. OK, so these are kind of supporting images of what you did on page one. Then at the bottom here, we're going to ask for a description of the concept. OK, now we're only going to allow you to have 250 words. We're just, we have a lot of submissions, and we want to see how you can showcase your, your, your concept in really a short period, OK? So this is your chance to kind of support the visuals with some written content. So take advantage of that here and stick to the 250 word limit. And that's page two. Now page three is going to explore site and locality, OK? So this top area here is going to be, oh, let's just zoom a little bit better here. This top area here is going to be where you're going to showcase images of the site location. Again, it can be in a poster format, or it can be just one single image. This is an example from the site selection milestone that one of the teams did. And they showcased the location. Um, where north is, where main roads are, and where the site is. This is one approach that you can use. Another approach, as shown here, would be to take some pictures of the site, and maybe that's going to really show the context better. I think the best job you could do would be to show where the, where the site is located on a map, and then support it with images of the site itself if you can go there locally. Now again, some of you have small scale systems. Uh, some of you have chosen kitchens or restaurants for your location. Treat this the same way. It might not be as big of a location, but tell us where does this farm go? Where would it typically go, OK? Now we're going to move on to a description of the site location. This is, again, 250 words to support your images of your site location. So if I were you, I would take this opportunity on page two to describe the concept and the highlights and the innovations of it, OK? And spend this area to talk about the description, like what are some of the problems in the local site? Why is there a need for local food? What are the opportunities there? Why did you choose it? So that you have a very consistent dialogue between the concept and then the site, which kind of justifies why the concept was formed that way. The final part on page three is going to be explaining your um, sales and distribution model in one sentence, OK, with some supporting details. So here's an example. We grow and sell wholesale basil to groceries within 50 kilometers of our vertical farm. So that's a very specific uh, sales and distribution model. They're selling the products at wholesale. They're selling basil. And they're looking for grocery stores within 50 kilometers. So definitely very local. That's going to help tell the judges what your approach is and what your business model is before we get into economics. Oh, I'm having trouble with this Zoom. <laughs> but uh, we can look here now. We've got the target customers, main buyers, and distance to market. Okay. So. For this concept, this example, our target customers are eco-conscious, lower middle class families. Again, this is just an example. You should choose something that's appropriate for your region and shows the judges that you've done some research and you've done something specific and unique. Well, who's the buyer? The Chico is a, a, a range of grocery stores around New York City, so I put that in as an example. And the distance to market, again, is reminded there, less than 50 kilometers. If you have multiple places you're selling to, uh, pick the, the one that's the furthest away so they can see what's the longest distance the food is going to travel. Moving on to page number four. This is going to be your opportunity to show the layout of the farm. Okay, So the first part is going to be your opportunity to showcase an image of how your vertical farm fits into the site and space you selected. This is an example that's not connected to the other images in this sample but is a good example of a layout, OK? This is a building that was converted as part of a, a conceptual exercise we did at the Agritecture Workshop in Las Vegas. You can see here they've noted that there's this growing area in the middle, and there's some supporting things going on, a commercial kitchen, a conference room, fine dining. OK, maybe you're not going to do so many things 
that are not related to the vertical farm. Maybe you are to generate extra revenue. This is your chance to showcase those other activities beyond the farm that are happening. It's also your chance to show what is the size and scale of the farm. Let's zoom out again and go to the next level, the next part of this. So moving down, we're now gonna have a little section where you're gonna be asked to describe the building footprint. We're gonna be using square meters and metric system uh, for all of the kind of measurements in this, in this challenge. So first you're gonna enter your building footprint in square meters. This is gonna help the, the judges understand how you utilized your site space and what space you have to work with before you actually build the interior systems, okay? If your system is a small scale system like a restaurant or a kitchen or something that would go in a kitchen or a backyard, put a sample and typical building footprint for a kitchen or a restaurant space where the farm would be or the backyard that you're gonna be working in. Then we're gonna to wanna to see your total cultivation area in square meters. So if you've gone vertically, let's say you have three levels and you fill up 60% of the space of the building footprint, they'll be able to understand that by seeing your cultivation area. So the cultivation area is all of those square meters that are actually cultivating and growing plants, okay? Then we're gonna talk about your primary grow method use. So again, remind them of what you chose in that typology at the beginning on page one. So hydroponic stacked vertically, okay? Then we're gonna want you to list your main crops, okay? Now you're gonna have as much space in this box. You can reduce the size to as low as 10. So if you have multiple crops, you can list those. We want you to list the crop and the days to harvest. This really shows us that you did your research and that you understand how long it takes to grow the plants. On the right side, you're just gonna put one big number here, which is gonna be the total yield of the operation in kilograms per year. If you have a very small operation, again, like a kitchen size or a restaurant size, still try and do kilograms, but if you do grams because it's so small, that could work too. But most of you are gonna be in the kilogram section, so focus on that. The next section is gonna be about the crops and yield. So here we can see again, we've got crop one, crop two, crop three. Keep in mind, this is an example, okay? So you can propose your own table that goes in here. You have the freedom how to present your crops and yield. This is an example of a best practice, okay? Some of the things we're gonna to wanna to look out for is what's the crop we're talking about? What's the total yield of that crop? Okay, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so it's easier to see. What's the total yield of that crop, okay? And then one thing that's really great to do is to look at how your wastage in your system will be reduced as your operation gets better. Now, this is something that might require you talking to some local farmers, uh, specifically indoor farmers if possible, and doing some research. But essentially, vertical farms have like any farm, have a little bit of a, a notable amount of wastage that can occur. In this case, we've chosen 25% as year one. And so that can really affect your bottom line, your revenue. But as your farm improves, as you learn more, year two, year three, year four, and year five, your wastage goes down. So this is your chance to show us what's the optimal wastage you think you can get to. Maybe it's 5%, maybe it's 15%. Maybe because you have a lot of volunteer work or less experienced staff because you have a social mission, your wastage might be higher. Maybe your system is more automated, so your wastage might be lower. This is an opportunity to showcase that and how your yields improve year after year. If you have multiple crops, we'd like to see those for the multiple crops. And all of these totals, especially the, the best year, let's say, would equal your actually excuse me, your year one would be your total yield of operation in kilograms per year, okay? And we can change that so it says year one. Um, we will send you this so that you can have view privileges over it. I think it's already in the Google, um, Google Hangout uh, link there, at least on the, on the plus page. 
But over here, you can see we have some examples of the calculations that went into this. It's going to be important that you showcase your calculations. Okay, but again, use this as a sample. Moving on to page five. Oh, just a reminder on page four, you have a chance here to put the summary of your methodology. So you can list some of your math, and you can link to a Google Sheets if you want to showcase the background behind your math. Now moving on to page five. This is going to be your elevation and section view. So an elevation view would typically be the view of the building from the side, and a section view could be a section view of the interior systems in the farm. Again, you can do this, this the way that you think is going to showcase your system the best. Some important things to keep in mind are that you want to show how many layers you're having in your vertical farm, if that's a big part of your concept, having multiple layers. It's going to help the judges understand how you utilize the lights and how you laid out the farm itself. If you want to showcase the architectural style of the building and maybe how light and air go through the building, then you might want to focus on more of an elevation view. This is your opportunity to showcase the systems inside of the farm and how they fill three-dimensional space. Keep that in mind and make the best concept representation that you can. The second part of this page is going to be all about jobs, OK? So we're going to want you to list the title of the job, what type of job it is. So farm manager is an example here, a senior laborer and a laborer. Is the job full-time or part-time? And what is the wage of the job? It's also going to be important for us to know the number of jobs. There should be a total in here, which we'll add when we send it out, and probably a total labor cost that we didn't include here. But there's plenty of space for that. So basically, show us your labor model in the space below here in the best way you can. Again, this is a sample to help guide you. Moving on to page six, economics. OK, now there's a lot of numbers here. <clears throat> and I wouldn't focus on the numbers as much, because this is an example. Um, we did do calculations for this. But it's not going to be the same as your farm, because every region, the costs are different, et cetera. So it's really about making your own research. But what I think is important is that you look at the line items, because these are the line items we're expecting to see. OK? So first, let's start with some of the capital costs, which is something that's going to be important to see. We want to see you at least explain the construction slash renovation cost of the space. So if you're converting a warehouse, you can take a typical square per square foot renovation cost for your region. Um, you can talk to some contractors. You can put an estimate in there that comes up with the, re with the renovation cost. If you're going to build a new building, this would be the cost to build that building. Then your lighting cost, the cost of purchasing the lights. Then your equipment cost for growth systems. Okay, So that's the systems used to cultivate the plants. We want to understand what your estimate is for that. There's many other costs with vertical farms, like HVAC and um, additional uh, equipment that you would need in your system. You can research those and put those in. But to simplify, these are the ones that we are expecting. Now we're going to get into the operational cost. And these are going to be the costs per year. If you are buying a building, then that would be your mortgage every year. If you are renting a building, that would be your rent each year. Then we want to have your lighting costs per year. How much is the cost of energy to power your lights? That's going to be a challenging calculation that I recommend you get started on as soon as you understand what your cultivation area is going to be. What are your other utility fees? An estimate from your HVAC or your energy costs for the system that are separate from lighting. What are your labor costs for year? So you can take this from the previous slide, that number you calculate for what labor is going to cost you each year. What are your supply costs each year? This could be something where you combine costs for nutrients, costs for seed, costs for packaging. Those are what will typically make up your supply cost. And then what's your marketing slash delivery cost per year? If you have a marketing or sales individual, then that would be accounted for in your labor per year number. And you can list that on your labor model. But this would account for some additional services like uh, 
payment for a truck if you're renting the truck or um, other kind of marketing um, materials that you might need to pay for. Um, the revenue streams are uh, over here on the right side. Um, so here we're going to want to see what's the percentage of revenue from crops and what's the percentage from other sources. As you do research into urban agriculture, you'll probably learn that a lot of the a lot of the revenue, or at least a lot of the farms, have to make revenue off other sources. The focus here is vertical farming, but don't ignore this. If there's an opportunity to make money off workshops or ecotourism, showcase that because that will probably make the economics of your farm improve. So here we've shown that we're using 50% of our revenue is going to come from other sources and 85% of our revenue is going to come from crops. Then we're going to estimate the revenue over five years. For the sake of the economics, we're going to have you focus on a five-year number, okay? Moving down. I know this is a lot, but that's why we're going through it. <laughs> This is going to be your opportunity here in the middle. I'll zoom in here in a second to explore to explore payback, okay? So we're going to want to know your gross revenue, your operational costs, and then your net revenue and when you're going to get your payback for your investment, okay? This is your chance to showcase what is the investment value of your farm. How does it add up? When are you going to get your money back? And again, this is an example. We are not going to force you to showcase um, in, a, in, in a very specific way the economics of your farm, but you need to show us that you've done your homework and your research and that you can show that this is an economically viable farm, vertical farm. Now the last part, for those of you who joined our webinar last time with Rebecca, we talked about energy and lighting. Lighting will typically be let me just see if I can get a better zoom here. Not really. Um, lighting will typically be um, one of your greatest uh, total operational costs. Sometimes that can be 30, 35 percent of the total operation costs, which is typically going to be secondary to your labor cost. So if your numbers aren't adding up to something like that, then you might be doing something wrong. Of course, every vertical farm is a little different, but that's what we've been seeing so far. In, in, some, in some operations. So the first question is going to be, how did you calculate the number of fixtures you needed? Okay, so this is going to be a great chance to look through the Illumitex blog, see how they calculate photon flux per area and micromules, how many hours per day they need. This is going to be your research for what your crop needs hours wise, what are people doing, why are you choosing the one you've done, and then to get you to your your target DLI and the number of, of lights you want. On the other side here, number of lights you need. On the other side here, we're going to talk about the type of light. Okay, so what brand have you chosen for your lights? Total number of fixtures. Generation in kilowatt hours. That's the, that's the energy use of the light. This is the cost per kilowatt hour in your region. This is the total hours of usage per year. This is the total cost of the system. Okay, and that number should be brought up here to your operational cost lighting fee per year. Now, a few words before I move on to the next stage. This is an example, okay? I'm sure some of you have more experience with economic models uh, than others. What's important to us is that you've asked the questions about how much it's gonna cost to set up your farm, how much it's gonna cost to operate your farm, the various streams where your revenue is gonna be coming from, when you think you're going to get the money back for that capital investment, how many lights you need, and the total energy costs for those lights. If you're using natural light, you need to maybe talk about the decision for doing that. So I've explained that if your concept does not require artificial light, if your concept uses natural light or no lighting, there's no need to calculate lighting costs, just explain your reasoning for your choice. Now, most vertical farms use artificial light. So you need to have a specific justification for why your vertical farm, maybe because of its size and scale or because of the region you're in, isn't going to be using artificial lights. 
Now we're going to move on to slide seven. We're getting there, everybody. Thanks for hanging in there. So slide seven is your chance to tell your sustainability story. So at the top here, we're going to look at what is the sustainability of the farm. And this isn't really a, a, a quantitative assessment of the sustainability. This is a chance for you to tell a narrative. So again, although there's only 250 words here, you have 250 words at the beginning to talk about your concept, 250 words to talk about your site location, and 250 words to talk about sustainability. So you can already start preparing that whole um, description of your concept and how those three things will play in together. Here I've listed an example from uh, zero carbon food or growing underground, and they explain what their system does, how it saves energy, how it captures, reduces food waste, how it reduces the carbon footprint, and they talk about how they use 70% less water. We want to see that you understand some of the environmental benefits of vertical farming and what unique sustainability benefits you have developed through your concept. How are you going to fund your farm? This should be right below here, and this is your opportunity to describe potential funding sources for your farm. We have a 100-word maximum here, so just keep it short. Talk about what kinds of funds you're going to get. If it's investment funds, what kinds of investors you're going to get it from. If it's grants, talk about some example grants that you might uh, think would be worthy for this. If it's your own family funds and, and you're starting the business yourself, talk about that. Let our judges know what the story is there and how you're going to access that, that funding to get this farm started. Finally, your last component for the template is going to be to show a systems diagram of resource flows throughout your vertical farm. This is an example systems diagram, which is a little bit blurry, sorry about that, from the plant in Chicago. The plant is a, a circular economy focused urban agriculture project that has a number of different operations in it that work together. And they have aquaponics, they have plants, they have kombucha that they're using waste from the CO2 for. They, they generate energy from the, from the biogas. They use a heating and cooling system. There's so many different things going on. And here is a great depiction of how those resources flow. Again, this isn't quantitative. They're not listing all of the amounts that are flowing from one place to another, and we don't expect that of you either. But we do want you to show how energy flows from one place to another, or resources rather. So this could be air, this could be CO2, this could be water, this could be plants being harvested and distributed to the community. There's so many different ways you can do that. This is a great chance to showcase how you think of your system and how it's going to operate. Over here, I've listed, a, I've included another example of a systems diagram. This one is a bit more energy focused and how it, the control systems from Priva, an AVF member, relate to the larger greenhouse system. Okay, so this is very specific, very Priva focused, but you can see where water's coming in, you can see where filtration happens, and you can see how the control system helps manage it all. Again, this sample will be uh, given to you so you can view it, and you'll be given your own template so you can make your own submission. So that's the final page of the submission. Again, there are seven pages that you are asked to fill, as you can see them there again. And this is a sample. So this is an example of how you could do this. But really, this is your concept and your opportunity to show the, to the judges what needs to be done, OK? So we can take some questions about the sample as we go back to Edward Silva, who's going to explain um, the rules for filling out this sample. So Edward, I think I'm going to keep this on here on the screen sure. share. And then maybe you can talk about the rules. Oh, that's great. And, and thank you, Henry. I think it's um, uh, very thorough. And it sounds like people can go back to this recording for any questions or concerns they may have. I think this is very valuable. Um, so in terms of the rules, we've uploaded them uh, on the website um, on the award.verticalfarming.net, uh, um, I believe it is. But to kind of give you a quick overview of what uh, the rules for the template and the final submission are, we've broken it up into essentially five or six pieces. Uh, the first, as you saw, and you can imagine, 
having a template like this with 100 plus teams, every to avoid having every single submission look a little bit different, we want to keep some things in place. And so that the judges have an easier time to go through the submissions, and also so that it's fair in comparing um, you know, one team to another team and being able to score them accordingly. So I'm going to highlight a couple of the things we want to keep constant. One is the word count. As you saw in most of the boxes where text is asked, there's a word count. Usually it's 250. Sometimes it might be 100. Um, and so we've built the boxes around that piece of text to kind of make, to make sense for that amount of words. Of course, you could adjust the boxes, um, but we really do ask, and we'll check on the word count um, of the submission. So word count is important. Uh, the second thing that we really want to hold constant is the order of slides. Uh, again, so judges have an ease of being able to score you know, one submission against another, and all of them kind of look at them all as a full package. We want you to keep the slides in the same order. The third piece is the order of content. And so you know, looking here on slide one, um, certainly you everyone's content's going to look a little bit different, but we really would like to keep things in the same order. So team name goes first. And then uh, the next box stays where it's at. Again, you can adjust them a little bit if need be. You can change the color if you want to, but really keeping things in order uh, is going to be super important. Uh, the fourth piece is the tables. And so you saw on some of the quantitative pieces, um, for example, crops and yield and around labor, um, keeping those tables there so, again, judges can compare and judges can um, give a fair assessment is really important. And the final one is uh, font size 10. And so as you notice, if you look through the uh, this slide and the slide decks, basically, you'll notice the font size isn't size 10 for everything. And if you want to change it all to 10, that's fine. What we ask is that you really, for any of the text you are entering, do not go above or below font size 10. Uh, and then maintain a font type of Arial or uh, Calibri to keep it simple. But really, Arial is probably the best. Um, besides that, you know, I, and I, I'm fully aware we're speaking to a group that is uh, most likely very skilled at design and has a really good eye for it. Even if you don't, it doesn't matter. This is a great spot to try it out. But we, we understand it and welcome folks adding their own special touch and design to the slides. As long as you stay within those uh, five or six constraints we just mentioned, we really want you to make this submission um, one of your own and kind of has your style and your feeling to it. Um, so those are the general rules. Anything else you think I'm missing, Henry? No, I think that covers it really well. Yeah, just a reminder, again, we're going to use metric system. And uh, for, for the economics, we're going to use US dollars, OK? Yep. To keep perfect. things consistent. You can imagine, I mean, we we've, we've really have a stacked set of judges, and we're just so excited by the number of submissions. So we really are, are doing our very best, and we think this is a great solution to have you showcase uh, your vision and your concept, but also keep it consistent. So yeah, please keep the structure of the slides that we send to you and spend energy showing off through your concepts and your writing and those areas and, and, and how, you, how you demonstrate your economics uh, rather than changing the actual format of this. If you change the format and, and break these rules, we actually will not be passing it on to the judges. So this is important. And when you get this, you will be able to see the notes um, here again on that May 10th email that Edward will send out. OK, thanks, Edward. So now I'm going to go to the last page. So this is where the judges are going to provide feedback. One thing that's really important to us is that you do get feedback um, even though you're, you, you, know, you might not have gotten the, the first prize, or, or even if you do get the first prize, you want to get that feedback. So um, you know, this is going to be a chance where, where you can hear from the judges uh, in a, in a short uh, way, how they responded to your concept. Um, and hopefully that will encourage you to develop it further and focus on areas that you could you can improve. Then below that is going to be the judging uh, rubric score. And I'm going to use that as a, a way to talk about that now. OK? So please pay attention to uh, this. We will be updating the one on the website. We've made some small changes. Um, as we've built out this sample. So you're going to be judged on four main categories. And the first one is going to be the economic viability with some supporting subcategories underneath it. 
So the judges will have a qualitative assessment on the feasibility of your farm. So it's important that you can demonstrate through data and through some explanations, maybe it's the funding sources part, part of it, why your farm is feasible. They're gonna wanna know your payback. When is the money gonna come back from the investment and how long is that gonna take? Don't be afraid to be honest about this. Vertical farms are tough to make economically viable. Um, and sometimes that can be seven or, or more years. So please do your, your homework and do some research and let us know how yours fits in that, that overall, uh, what we're seeing with some of the economics. List your potential funding sources. This shows again that you've done homework and that you have some plans and vision for it. Estimated yield. What crops did you use? Tell them that. Um, yield per square meter of those crops how you calculated the math for that, and what amount of wastage you're estimating. Energy, total usage, usage per square meter of growing surface. Okay, and that can be an average usage per meter of growing surface for your whole area if you want. If you wanna showcase it per crop, that's up to you, but we're, we're expecting more as the average per, 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 meter square, per square meter of growing surface. Number of lights and hours the lights are on. Math behind calculations. Jobs, number of jobs, wages, type of job, and then the judges will say, do these jobs seem adequate? Is this enough jobs for the system they're describing? If the jobs are low and you haven't demonstrated why there's a lot of, how there's a lot of automation in your system, they'll probably dock you down on some points. If you put too many jobs, they'll probably dock you down on some points. And how is that justified? You know, is, it, is it the appropriate amount? Locality. Site selection, proposed buyers slash consumers, distance to main buyer. That's what you're gonna be judged on for locality. The sustainability is gonna be the narratives of sustainability impact and the systems diagram. Again, that's that final slide there. Now aesthetic, you're gonna be judged on a qualitative assessment of creativity and design innovation. So really showcasing your design uh, through the concept is gonna be really valuable. 3D elevation view, that's that, that section view I talked about, the 2D layout, and then these are your, your graphics or your, your sketch, okay? So just going back here, you have the section view to showcase your concept, you have the layout view to showcase your concept, you have the site description to showcase the locality, you have the concept visual, money shot on the front page, and then supporting visuals on page two. So that's plenty of opportunities to showcase your concept and really paint a picture for the judges. Now we've thrown in another, um, another point in here, another set of points. We're, we're, we're gonna give you some credit for education. So that video that was discussed uh, at the beginning when Edward spoke, back when we were looking at the schedule, is this public voting section, okay? So we're gonna ask for a one minute video where you and members of your team or members of your team talk about your concept and what you learned through the experience and why the public should vote for you. Whichever team gets the most votes will get additional points added to their score to boost their overall score that the judges give them. So this is a great opportunity to share and educate about what you've learned through the AVF Award experience and again, it's only gonna be a one minute video. So it's really a fun and, and great way to get involved and get some extra points that are gonna help maybe put you over the edge and get you to that winning prize and, and, and hopefully get you to Amsterdam. So I think I covered the judging rubric, right? Anything else, Edward, on that side? No, you've covered it pretty well. Yeah, I think that's um, good coverage. And again, we're always available for questions in the, between now and, and the final submission. Okay, great. So we've got some questions coming in. Um, please ask your questions. I can switch back and forth to the, uh, the sample and get those answered for you. Um, first question from Felipe. Is it possible to add attachments in the case of having to explain something that complements the project and is not listed in the template? Felipe, if you could be more specific about something that isn't listed in there, um, we can either adapt the sample to include it, if we think it's something that's gonna be common, 
but we are trying to avoid attachments. We're trying to help you narrow down your concept so you can put it in here. The only kind of attachment, and it's not really an attachment that we're considering, is on the economics, you can add a link of a Google Sheets document so that if there's some questions about your economics, they can go back to those and, uh, and, and kind of double check them. But we hope that we've given you enough space to visualize your concept and to sell the idea of it. Um, if there isn't enough space for the economics, again, there's a Google Sheets link. Um, as you can imagine, it's going to be difficult to give a whole package of attachments to judges. So to equalize and to make it fair, this is kind of the window for your concept, is this template. So Felipe, if there's something specific you think you want to include in there, let us know uh, what you have in mind, and we can answer that, answer that for you. So any other questions about the final submission, um, the dates for that? Uh, any other questions about the competition as a whole? Um, or our next milestone five, which is going to be on, which is going to be due on May thirteenth. For those of you who just joined or joined recently, milestone five is going to be kind of your concept drawing. So we've done the site, we've done the crops, we've done the lights. Um, you submitted your kind of team vision and mission at the beginning, and now this is going to be your first concept drawing that we will see from you on on May thirteenth. So don't miss that milestone five. Edward, anything else we missed here? You know, I feel like it was uh, a lot to cover, but um... yeah. no, I, th I think you covered it well. I, I imagine uh, if I was participating in the challenge, I'd probably take a day or two to look over this. Um, once I get it on Tuesday, think about it, and I probably have some follow-up questions there. Um, but for all the teams participating, I, I think this is a really exciting phase to begin. It's like you've been prepping for this for so many weeks, and now it's the, the kind of final countdown. Yeah, exactly, as Edward said it. So I'm just going to review the schedule one more time for those new, new, new individuals that joined us and give you a little bit more time for some Q&A um, before we wrap this webinar up. Um, we have one question here coming in. Is there a max size for the file, Edward? What do you think about that? Um, I have to check with you, Noodle, and I will, in my follow-up email, I'll make a note of that and, and send it out if there is. Um, but what we're going to have you do is you'll get the file as a PowerPoint, save it as a PDF, and you'll have full instructions on how to do that if you don't know how, uh, and you'll be uploading that PDF into you, Noodle. But I, I will check on the, the file size. Great. That's a good question, Jose. Thank you. Thank you. So dates coming up, OK? On Tuesday, May 10th, you're going to be getting the final template and some support materials for using that, OK? We'll include in there what the total, uh, the max size can be and the mechanism for doing it. Already now, you should be working on Milestone 5, which is one visual um, of your concept. So that's your your. It could be your money shot. It could be one of your very um, your your several images that you're going to be using on your your final submission. That's that there. Your final submission is going to be due Monday, May twenty third, at eleven fifty nine p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Anything received after this time will not be eligible. So I definitely recommend making sure you have everything done before then and you submit it, <clears throat> because if there's any technical issues and uploading. We don't want any delays there, OK? You'll get a confirmation from Unoodle, I assume, Edward, when it's yep. been received. But, um, but make sure it's up on there, because that's going to be on, on Tuesday, May 24th, is when we're going to be looking through it and saying, OK, this is how many of the 100 teams who actually submitted the final item. And those are the ones that are eligible for that $5,000 in prize money from Illumitex and a trip to Amsterdam and that exciting uh, second place prize from Thought for Food, and the third place prize from Globumbus. So you, know, you don't want to miss those. And so we've given you, from when you submit your concept drawing on May 13th until the final submission, you know, 10 days to really get that done. So you better just, from now until the 23rd, really be working on um, getting that template ready. And we're not going to change a lot from this template we, ju we just reviewed today. We might make a few small changes. But this is really what's going to be expected 
And so you're going to get that link soon, and, and you can watch this webinar to, to kind of understand what's expected on each stage. OK? Then the public voting is going to be when you do that education component, when you do that video. You're going to try and get as many likes as possible. And then we're going to announce the winning teams on May 30th. And we're going to see the winner in Amsterdam on June 13th. Um, question from Susanna Prieto Brava. Is it OK to think of doing marketing outsourcing? Um, Susanna, I think maybe you mean for the, the marketing line item and the operations, uh, outsourcing it from your business. Um, I, if that's what you mean, yeah, that's fine. Just try and get an estimate for what that's going to cost you each year and put that in as your line item. Um, I think if your farm is small, you're probably not going to want a marketing person on staff all the time. So it's not a bad idea to outsource some of that. Just ask me another question if, if I didn't quite answer that for you or, or tell me you got it if, if I did get it for you. <laughs> well, while she's answering that, I checked and it's 10 megabytes is the limit for uploading to uNoodle. OK. 10 megabytes, that's pretty big. Yeah, yeah. So um, we're going to want that in PDF format. So you should be able to um, know before you submit it what the size of that PDF is. Mm -hmm. And again, we're going to be here, competition at vertical-farming.net to, to answer your questions. I know this is the, the finish line, so that's great. So Susanna says, I got it. Thanks. Really appreciate that uh, confirmation there. Jose is asking for when the deadline is to submit the video. What's our deadline for that, Edward, for that uh, public voting part? Uh, I would say it's, that's going to be uh, the starts on the 24th, so most likely midnight of the 23rd. I, I would submit it actually at the same time that the final submission is submitted. Yeah, I think it's going to be at the same yeah. time. So you'll upload, your, um, you'll upload your final submission in that PDF format. Um, again, 10 megabytes uh, max. And then you're going to also upload your one minute video. What we'll do is we'll be taking those, the, your submission, passing that on to the judges, and then we'll be putting your video up on the Association of Vertical Farming Facebook page. And then you can send people there to get likes for you um, as, as you really kind of educate. Again, that's the theme is, is what are you going to teach people as they visit and see your video? Maybe it's things you've learned. Maybe it's something unique from your farm. And it's, it's really a great opportunity. Um, just a reminder, if you have a, a elements, and this is, again, one of the rules from the beginning, if you have elements of your farm that are intellectual property, that they are protected, or that you know, really they, 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 they are IP related, you know, you're asked not to share those. This is a conceptual uh, design a competition. And what you share with the judges will not be shared publicly, meaning the whole document won't be. But we will be taking certain concepts from that and sharing that as per the media uh, release that was done. So you know, be smart about what you're sharing um, you know, because we want to also protect your ideas, but you want to give really a great uh, concept submission so you can win the prize. And, and I think we've designed it so that works that way. Jose says, thanks. Really appreciate that, Jose. And Felipe says, no question, but thank you all of you for this time and this opportunity. Well, you know, thank you, Felipe, for taking part. It's just been really inspiring for us to see how many people all across the globe are excited about vertical farming. And, uh, and we really, really want to keep mentoring you and inspiring you to, to learn more about indoor agriculture, urban agriculture, and stacking, stacking all of that in and around cities using vertical systems. So um, we're going to wrap up here. I think we've taken enough time. This video um, will be recorded, and we're sorry for the, the jump, bumpy start, but it will be recorded on YouTube, and uh, so you can watch it later on. You can follow the conversation about the AVF Award by using hashtag AVF Award and checking out the social media posts from our sponsors. We also want to remind you that um, on June 13th is the Association for Vertical Farming Summit. It's going to be the largest gathering of vertical farming uh, professionals and enthusiasts, we think, to date. So we really hope you can make it. Uh, AVF members get 50% off. And of course, it's going to be the opportunity for the winner of the AVF award uh, to meet all the movers and shakers and present their, their idea. So we're really excited about that. Thank you all for your time. Uh, thank you, Edward. And stay tuned for your, your next big email, which is going to be on Tuesday, May 10th.